Hello, it's uh, Phil again with uh, Healthcare Business News, and I'm joined today with Don K. Dennison, who is uh, appropriately enough the president of Don K. Dennison Solutions, based in uh, not far from Toronto, Canada. Don, how are you? Uh, thank you for joining us. Good morning. Thanks for having me. So I know that you're there. Uh, how are things? How is the pandemic impacting life in Canada? Let's start there. Uh, <clears throat> interestingly enough, uh, we've had not as large of an outbreak as, say, in the U.S. The, the controls that were put in place were relatively early on, and I think we had a fairly high compliance. And I also think that um, the um, we have a lot of space. I don't think we're as dense, densely populated as, as some areas. Uh, so if you take a look at the statistics, which are you know published, uh, we're in pretty good shape right now. Uh, we're still kind of in an early um, phase to opening. From a healthcare point of view, we haven't seen as much uh, of say the healthcare systems being overwhelmed. Uh, a lot of my colleagues who work in the health system, I mean, uh, volumes have dropped off significantly. For example, for outpatient uh, imaging for non-essential procedures. That dropped off, so it was a lot of volume reduction, but a lot of it is, is um, coming back up now. So I would say we're about medium in terms of uh, impact, not as severe as some regions, I think. I see. You know, I read the, I reread the story that you, or your contribution to our January, February issue. Um, and it's, dense and I encourage anyone to read it because you cover so many topics. Um, the pandemic is impacting the way radiologists work. There's squeeze, there's an, uh, uh, a tendency to squeeze radiologists to produce more. Uh, you've, you're an expert in his and RIS and uh, PACS and uh, EMR. When you, when you look into the future and you take into account the pandemic for both large institutions and uh, small institutions, where do you see, when you look in your crystal ball, what do you see? So, yeah, it's, it's interesting. The, you know, we're constantly for several years looking to how do we maximize productivity per radiologist to FTE, more and more volume. Uh, and we have talked recently about things like burnout uh, and, and those type of impacts. And so for many years, radiologists have been seeking a way to have more of a work-life balance by reading at home or reading from a cottage or a boat, that type of thing. So they could do more off-hour coverage without having to always be in the reading room. But there are always excuses related to information security and other logistical issues of maintaining these high-end desktops. Uh, and then all of a sudden along comes a pandemic and all of a sudden overnight all those reasons or when some people might call them excuses go away and we now we have home reading all over the country and people are productive i have uh friends who have started uh started new jobs during this pandemic and they have a home reading workstation they've never been into the hospital they've been working for for the last month they're not even in the same city as the hospital and they're productive so i think one of the things was you know, and, and up here in Canada, we, we've been a, a fairly fairly big advocate or adopter of telehealth, uh, but I think there's always been uh, a, a sense there could be a lot more done and that it's a lot more productive, a lot less risky, having different patients pass through the same room. And a lot of things can be diagnosed remotely. So I think one of the things we're gonna see uh, is gonna be a lot of shift towards uh, remote reading. Uh, and that includes not just the image display, but also access to all the clinical patient history information, the reporting application, any type of processing, uh, advanced visualization like 3D or, clinic or um, structured analytic quantified data. I think all of those things are going to shift a lot more out of the reading room, the core areas, and out to uh, areas that are maybe more convenient for the readers. I think that's something that it's going to be very hard to get that back in the bottle, that genie. So one of the things I read, one of the, your comments is that large hospital groups are more reluctant to allow data outside their network. Mm -hmm. How do we overcome that in the pandemic? Well, they, they just change where the network goes. So for example, what's common is if, I, if, if a health system has data within their IT systems and the people responsible for it know how to manage it, sending a copy of that data outside of the system to some other one, 
that requires a fairly high level of trust. And sometimes there is even a concern over competitive disadvantage to a degree, although that's, um, that's not helpful for the patients. Um, when we look at things that are remote, like say, uh, you know, small reading office um, uh, at home, or even what we call, you know, time shifting, where you may have a rad who's positioned four time zones away or five or six, like someone in Hawaii, so that within the same reading group, using the same standards, the same equipment, same reporting templates, uh, same uh, uh, clinical standards of, of reporting care, all of those things, you can do that, but it's essentially you're creating an extended network, like a virtual private network or something similar. So the data is not actually leaving the system, but the people are no, not in the same uh, brick and mortar walls. So I think that's something that, I mean, IT has been able to do that for a long time. Healthcare has been a little bit reluctant to do that type of thing, but I think it's going to be, um, it's going to ramp up like in, in some of the sessions I was involved in with Sim, people were talking about how this rapid push to move everybody outside of the hospital to work overnight, they doubled their internet capacity to support this. Well, you know, the, the economics and the reality forced that to be true, but that could have been done as a strategic um, plan and done proactively without waiting for this crisis. And, and I've worked with health systems who have home reading and have had it for years. So when the pandemic came along, it was a, a small shift. They may have added a few workstations. Um, one of the things I do concern myself with is how, what impact that has on the education of new uh, residents and fellows coming up because of so much education and mentoring is at the elbow where they can interact uh, two different residents and an attending can interact on a complex case, discuss what needs to be reported, all those things. It doesn't work the same on Zoom. Do you know what I mean? Like it's just not as, as personal and, and the, the emotion of what is important of, of that teaching moment. That's one thing I'm curious to see, what, you know, a year from now, whether uh, programs and also for clinical conferences where you have, you know, uh, a tumor board and people are discussing these complex cases. This is how these different specialties learn about how the others think and what they care about and, and how you learn better to do your job to support the other person's job. You put it on Zoom and people do an email and other things. So I, I, I'm concerned a little bit about the collaboration part when we get distance. Uh, but the rest of it, I think, is you can be equally productive reading chest x-rays at home as you can in the office, perhaps more. So uh, if I'm hearing you correctly, the pandemic has forced healthcare providers to adopt remote technology, which has worked for some time, but they've been reluctant to use, mm -hmm. which is a plus. And the potential minus is there's, and I don't want to oversimplify, but, and the potential minus is that, that it's harder to train the new people on their way up. Training and, and, and communication, uh, collaboration, not only between radiologists and other clinicians like oncologists, but also if you, if you spend some time in these health systems and observe, you, where you see really productive relationships is where you have, say, CT techs or charge techs in charge of CT and rads who cover the, those body parts, those subspecialties. They start to develop a rapport and an understanding of the type of acquisitions and the type of notes they want taken. And, and it's personal. You watch them come in, they smile, they talk to each other, they ask them how they were doing. That type of commitment. So when it's end of shift and I'm officially supposed to be able to leave, I know this doctor is working and I know this is an important case. So I go that extra mile because I care about my colleague, even though they're probably sitting, you know, down the hall kind of thing. I may not see them directly. Right. That kind of thing is once we get to this completely isolated parts of the healthcare chain, it becomes much more like factory work. And that's where kind of my concern is, is that a lot of the good parts of work are done because colleagues care about how other colleagues are affected by their own work practices. And I think if we become completely separated, that might be at risk. Well, I hope that you'll continue to contribute to our uh, news and our publication so that we can learn uh, what you think has happened in six months. And My I pleasure. want to thank you, for, thank you very much for joining us today, Don. You're like a, a sharp guy with a lot of vision. So thank you for joining us. <laughs>